Ken Darnell, we're talking about how the American chestnut was everywhere at one point and very important to Americans that were here during that period of time and, and those who came before. What hope is there of this being seen around the nation? Maybe not like it was at one point in time, but what hope is there and what is being done here in Kentucky and other places? So the, the hope for the tree to come back is higher than ever because the American Chestnut Foundation is leading the, the charge coordinating with scientists, universities, U.S. Forest Service, quite a few other uh, partners to do various studies, various research to the different parts of restoring a tree. The Chestnut Foundation has been breeding trees for the past 39 years. So they kind of started out in general with the thought process to breed the American chestnut with the Chinese chestnut. The Chinese chestnut has natural tolerance is the right word to the blight. It gets it, but then the Chinese trees has mechanisms to scar over, scar over the blight and continue to live. The American chestnut just does not have the same ability. So we have several hybrid orchards that we have kind of developed on our own with some help from our regional scientists. So we're doing our thing with just, uh, for the most part, Kentucky genes from Kentucky trees. So as you can see behind you, we've got some pretty healthy trees. We've are, we have planted here 3,650 trees beginning 2016 was the first planting, which was right down here behind us. So we planted trees in here for the first three years, 16, 17, 18 basically. That's the trees you see back there, and they're, uh, they're now hitting 20 feet, even up to 21, 22 feet, and producing a few burrs you can see on the trees behind us. So we've had some pretty good success here. From the 3,650 planted, we have thinned them down now to the current 1,214. As trees died naturally from the blight, we cut those out. We also inject some blight into the larger trees to test them. Then we watch how the tree reacts. If it tries to scar over like a Chinese tree does, we keep that tree. If it doesn't defend itself uh, and scar over that canker from the blight, then we cut that tree out. So out of 3,650 trees planted in this orchard, we end up keeping um, the top 25, maybe 30. Uh, so we are half, just a little over halfway to the sortation process to thin these trees out to get the best trees that then will be allowed to pollinate each other to share their good genes from different mother trees that have come from all over a uh, regional area to make some good nuts to plant and develop another orchard probably five years away here from here from getting down those best 25 trees. So in our lifetime, we could see trees producing in the forest. So yeah, yeah, so we could be seeing trees in the forest. As a matter of fact, there are some restoration plantings currently occurring by the U.S. Forest Service, among other people, to test the hybrids we have, which these hybrids average 94% American, 6% Chinese genes, trying to get the right genes into them. So a few of those trees have been planted in the forest. They've not been that competitive and healthy yet compared to the other trees. And, and also to live long enough to shoot up into the canopy where they can be like the former big American chestnuts, get up in that canopy, get the sunlight, grow strong enough to produce plenty of burrs to produce more trees. In our lifetime, we are certainly gonna have some trees planted more for, I think, tests, uh, more for proof, but those plantings here in the coming few years are certainly going to expand. Are we going to see a forceful American chestnut? That's hundreds of years away. Right. How does the uh, how does the blight actually attack the tree? How does it kill the tree? The blight that came here came from uh, Asia, um, came into New York before it was first discovered. New York Botanical Gardens. When they saw that disease on their chestnuts, they knew something bad was wrong. It was spreading quickly. Bottom line was they found out from there it was an airborne fungus. Uh, the filaments travel in the air, which means it moves quickly. Birds carry it, the wind carries it. So it only took uh, 40 or 50 years to travel the whole range to kill most of the trees. A few scattered trees kind of hid from the blight for a, a short time. But the blight basically is in most, pretty much everywhere, so the trees can't hide forever. Airborne blight kills the cambial layer, gets into the bark. Uh, starts eating the cambial layer, which kills the branches and then kills the main stem, kills the top of the tree. Remaining trees that are, are not, we can't say they're unaffected, but have managed to pull through, where are those at, some of the larger trees? 
I think the American chestnut foundation has documented something like 26 large LSA trees, they're called large surviving American trees, scattered, I know, from Kentucky to Maine and quite a few states in between. They have survived the blight and they have cankers and scars to prove it's some mechanism, maybe something different in each tree. Our scientists are studying that. What is it? They are breeding those trees a lot, trying to get their genes into our population. They must have something good. Now, there are bigger trees like out west where people carried them and planted outside the Blight Range. They're full Americans, but they're not the Appalachian gotcha. surviving trees. So around 26 of those. Well, thank you so much for giving us hope. We appreciate the visit today. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for coming out here. Uh -huh.